All right, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So as Al and I were preparing for this, we thought about how do we bring value to you? And everything around my thing is technology. However, it's not just about technology. It's running the best business. And what we know matters to you is how do I earn more money and save time? And that's really a lot of what our message is going to be about is how do I earn more money and save time? And the biggest words that keep coming to mind are innovation and disruption. You're going to hear that over and over again from Keller Williams because we're hearing that over and over again. And that statement can be used in everything you're doing. How do you make sure that you stay innovative in your own personal business? And how do you get disruptive? As an organization, Keller Williams was known as being disruptive for many years. And guess what we saw this year around growth? That Keller Williams is kind of stagnant on our success and where we are. And we're at the top, we're number one, yet we didn't have a big increase year over year in production or a big increase year over year over age account. And neither did Remax, neither did any of those other companies. And what's interesting is Compass and EXP, though, had exponential growth because they just became the disruptors. And while they're not large enough to touch us yet, we have to start thinking, how do we get more innovative and be disruptive in our business? And that's what we're gonna share with you today. And you're gonna actually be surprised by what is considered disruption in our industry around this stuff. So I actually wanna start off, and Heather, would you come up and be my little partner on this? So I wanna do an exercise no that we're teaching our leaders <laughs> to have a conversation on what we call a tech analysis. And it's not painful. It's not like going to the doctor. We're just going to have an honest conversation around what is the Edwards Group spending. If you want to take a seat here, I will write on the board. And we're going to have a conversation around how do you run your enterprise and what technology do you have? What does it cost you maybe a month? And what does that cost a year? We're going to do an exercise around that. And odds are everyone in this room have probably never stopped to look at what are we actually spending all that stuff on, right? How much tech do I actually have? And here's why I know that. What about tech in your personal life? How much are you spending a month on your cell phone? How much are you spending a month on Netflix, on Pandora, on Amazon? Do you actually do a tech audit of your own personal expenses or you just go, hey, a little here, a little here, no big deal? Well, you're gonna be surprised when we do this on the technology side of things. So, all right, Heather, thank you for being here. I'm writing the board, sorry when I turn my back to you. I'm gonna write in here the Edwards group. And what we're gonna do here, and I'll just say G, I'm gonna draw a circle around it. So Heather, what are some examples of third-party technology that you're using your business to piece your business together? Uh, conversion, or okay. CRM. So we've got our conversions up with the K. K. Yep, conversion. So that's your CRM. And what are you spending on that one? $1,000. One K a month, so that's 12,000 a year? Yes. Perfect. Okay, what other technology do we have? Uh, Bozilla. Okay, perfect. I think that's still should be on there, right? So what are you guys spending? I spelled it wrong. Still low. How much are you guys spend around a month on that? Uh, 3000 Okay, so now we're spending 3000 there. That's 36000 <coughs> per year. Okay, what other technology do we have? Did you guys use the auto dialer? Do you have uh, oh, yeah, we your call center? Okay, so we used um, uh, Mojo. You know around what that's cost a month? It's about 300 okay. But we also use Vulcan 7. Mm -hmm. For the numbers. Mm -hmm. And what does that one cost us? Um, probably about the same 300 So combined, we're looking at about 600 a month. Mm -hmm. So what is that, 1800 a year? Yeah. Roughly. Six times. Six times. 7200. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> 7200. Good catch. Okay. <laughs> Do you see just where we're starting to go with this? And there's things that probably didn't even pop in our head yet. Okay, what else do we use? Do you set anything around uh, marketing? Do you use an email system that you use, or is that all included uh, in the version? No, we use MailChimp. Okay. It's $30 a month. All right. 30 a month, so we're looking at 360 a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Can we technology and lead generation do anything with Zillow.com or is it all Zillow? Uh, all Zillow. Uh, what about um, you have your Mojo Dialer? Do you do anything else technology wise around callings? Do you have a separate voice line or anything that you need oh, yeah. to pay for? Um, okay, so we use, um, yeah, we have a phone. I um, can't remember the name of it, but that's $70 a month, like to route calls. Correct. So you have a call routing service. 
so that's how you look. So what's fascinating about this is how many of these just pop in your head right off the bat? You had to think a little. Yeah. Here's the exercise that Gary's doing at Jason Abrams around the country. We do this at the Rainmaker first, pull the admin in and have the admin tell you, did they get it right? And what did we forget? Oh, well, you forgot about that food and pay for QuickBooks. You didn't put that down. How much we you paid for QuickBooks? Do you have that? Yeah, $50 a month. All right, so that's $50 a month for UB, right? Like what other things are we missing that we don't think about? You can run and use your cell phone for your business, mm -hmm. so it's an added expense. Mm -hmm. And you and Corey have a family plan, I'm sure, so you probably spend a lot more on that. 400 There you go. See where this starts adding up. And the reason we're doing this isn't to bring pain to it, it's actually to have a business consultation around this. Are you aware of your business? And odds are, most of you probably just aren't even aware of how much you're spending on this area. Right now, we have a ballpark. So we've got uh, 36,000 there, we've got 12,000 there. This is what, a good 50,000 easily a year or more. How much are you spending in your technology? And here's why I wanted to do that. So we're spending about 50K, and I know my handwriting is atrocious, sorry. However, the concept is the same. If we're spending $50,000 a year, that's money that you're not spending on your family. That's money that you're not putting back in your business because you're spending all this stuff. So thank you. That's all I needed from you for that. And right, I'm sure there's things we even missed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I cut her on the spot last night around nine o'clock to say, hey, would you be able to come up and give us some numbers? So that's the reason I kind of want to do that because have you been done this? You guys, we have agents in this office who think about it for profit share. How many agents are you doing business with that you probably don't even know what they're spending on? You know what we did include in this? MLS fees, that's part of your technology. Supra, lockboxes. Are you really thinking of technology? And here's the thing, I, I love when people tell me they're not technologies, like there's not a thing, I'm not a tech person. Well, let me ask you, do you still go to the river and pound your clothes with the rock? <laughs> or do you have a washer machine? Do you go home and hand wash all your dishes? Some do, or do you have a dishwasher? My brother calls it the drying rack. Right? Do you have those things? You have technology, and we all know you all have a smartphone in your pocket. So it's not that you're not technology or a tech-enabled person. It's just you're not as comfortable yet with making some of the new changes. However, it's not about technology, guys. This is just cost. I'm going to tie this in to what is actually the consumer process. So here's the reality. If this is the line of the entire transaction, getting me to payday, and this is a closing, we bought our house, and I got maybe a $10,000 commission, right? The goal is to eventually get here. What's the life cycle of this though? Well, I gotta start lead generating first. So this is your LG, lead generation, right? You gotta lead generate to end up finally getting the closing. And the reality is most of these people, you're probably not talking to for a good maybe seven to 10 years till they get to that point. And then you have a conversation right around here with a couple months in where they finally say, hey, I'm ready. I'm thinking that it's time. Right, that's taking you through it. And going here, and the focus is, this is lead gen. What's here in the center for seven to 10 years sometimes? Follow-up. Follow-up is the whole goal here, right? To get to your closing. So follow-up to get to the payday, right? I'll use the dollar sign to get there. And here's the reality. We always talk about this law of um, proximity, right? So this is the wavy line. I think you've all seen it by this point in your life. And if you look at this, buying the home is typically one of the top points here. And you are having the conversation in this little area. So if you got a lead from the internet, so I got a lead from Zillow, Heather's spending $3,000 a month on Zillow. She gets a lead today, and if they say I'm ready, willing, and able to buy in the next two, three months, what does she say? What a great lead, I love it, it's awesome, Zillow works, right? That's because it was here. And she talked to them right here as they're getting ready. But what's the reality of what's this bottom point? The day they closed on the house and it's the day after. The day after they are the farthest away from the transaction now. And this is the part that's seven to 10 years. And the reality is the law of just where you're at this is as you get closer is when they finally raise their hand. That's you going to the clothing department store and someone's saying, can I help you? And you go, no, 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 I'm good. And you walk around, you walk around. Then you get to this fitting room and you're trying on something. Can I help you? No, 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 I'm good. Then you come out and say, okay, I can't find the size I need. Can you help me? 
and you grab the closest person to you to do that transaction. That's real estate. Here's the difference. Our opportunity is this. Zillow's game is this. And the reality is we're all trying to get here to the payday and taking more money. So the surprisingly simple answer to all this is actually going to be a 36 touch. So I want to share with you what we're going to do to help you focus on a true 36 touch. How many in here actually have a version of 36 touch? It's not every hand in the room. And here's why I know, because you might say you do, and you're probably like me when I started in real estate, and I probably just said E-Edge has what they call a 33 touch. I put them on the plan and boom, I'm in business. We're good to go. Well, there were a couple steps in that plan you probably didn't do, like actually call them. Like actually remember to send the hand to the car. So the ironic thing is that means your other agents are doing the same thing you are. They don't have a clue what do we do to follow up. They're looking at the people closest to the transaction and they don't talk to the person after. And that's because the National Association of Realtors teaches us that 84% of the realtors, they would use the realtor again and less than 10% now actually even do because they didn't hear from you. And you know what company is not sleeping to do that? Zillow. They will be spamming that person until the day they die. And you say, oh, I can't call them, it's too much. You can. So we're gonna focus on helping you. And it all starts with the 36 touch change it to four client appreciation events quarterly, right? So are you gonna do a client appreciation event, appreciation event quarterly? Because guess what? That just became your touch. That just became a reason to send a handwritten card. That became a way to actually say, hey, I care about you. Because this is the number one thing Zillow can't do. They can send me as many emails as they want. They can't love me. They can't love me. They're not a human. And right now what's happening is if you go online, what do you see? I went online. I'm going to pull up Zillow here in a minute. And guess what the first thing it says? Do you want us to buy your house for you? We'll give you cash in South Florida called Zillow Offers. They are targeting your clients better than you are. And the way we're gonna help you in business is the 33, 36 touch. So we're gonna do four client appreciation events. Then we're gonna make sure that you do a quarterly call, right? So we're gonna do four quarterly calls around the event to invite them or thank them for coming or invite them in. You can throw text into that too. But then we're gonna make sure that we actually do a handwritten card, right? Whether that's an invitation, a mailer, there should be some physical Peace, give it to them by mail, quarterly as well. Then you sprinkle in the real estate. And something I can teach you today very simply, what about the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture email that's automatically live today inside a command to put somebody on? That ends up being 24 touches a month, plus your four cards, plus your four calls, plus here, 36 touch. So when agents go, there's no 36 touch in command, it's there. We made it in pieces because you didn't use it when we gave it to you that way in E-Edge. E-Edge gave you reminders. Most likely you didn't go look at them for the day and say, hey, who do I actually have to call? You just said, hey, I put you on the email campaign. I you get my monthly email? I hope you open it up and buy a house for me. It's, that's the waiting and praying. So that's what I want to focus on here. And everything Heather mentioned, by the way, those services fit into these three categories, right? Lead generation, follow up, or get her to the transaction to close to get to the payday, to actually make the money. And how much did you do in GCI last year, Heather? $1 million. $1 million. And did that happen overnight? No. So don't look at her and say, wow, she did that and it took some. I've been with them when they were doing 300,000 as a big and 500 and that journey, and that was painful. That was a lot of growth. That was a lot of learning from Alan. So the focus is to help you with these things. So I actually want to do an exercise right now. Who in here, I'm not going to ask who's used command, who here hasn't or has not put stuff in? It's okay. Dave, you're a perfect example for this one. It's good. I'm going to put you in the system, and I want to teach you some of this. And here's why, guys. It's not to shame you. It's to show that we have to start these conversations now. And if we start doing this, there's so much more that you can take advantage of. And it's not about what the system can do. The goal is to save you time and money. So let me explain what this even is. This isn't what we call a platform. And while we know the agent may not want to embrace technology, guess what? Your consumer is a tech-enabled consumer. They're on the Amazon app on their phone. They're on Facebook. 
They're on Uber, Lyft. They're on all these systems, and we're the ones saying, oh, technology's hard, I can't do that, I don't wanna go there. They're never gonna go there and do that. Zillow offers just prove to us that your client's gonna hit a button and say, this sim is easy. And in our avatar office, we had an agent who had a listing, and her client went online and said, oh, I didn't know Zillow buys houses, I wonder if they will buy ours. And Zillow was the buyer on our agent's listing, and the agent still told me afterwards, don't worry, my client will come back to me. Why? They just figured out they could hit a button and they did your job by having Zillow be the buyer. Why would they use you next time on their next home if that was easy to them and got them where they need to be? So when I talk about a platform, which is what this is, you guys, you're already on one. It's your smartphone. And in this smartphone realm, you chose two choices, Android and Apple. That's it. There's no uh, Windows Phone anymore. There's no Blackberry in the world. You chose two. What do you think happens in real estate when there's a platform and the client has a platform that goes from the beginning of a transaction to financing, to insurance, to everything about that transaction and beyond in one app? It comes down to a couple players. Not 80,000 million brokerages in all of America. There's only be a couple players in this game. And as Alan already shared with you, Gary did bet the farm on this. He went to his family and said, hey, let's do this. I'm putting it all in. And you have a rich uncle that you're using his cash to build this with. <laughs> and we're not charging you actually for that. Now, it's not 100% free. I know they have heard agents ask that. It's included in your $25 a month fee that we collect from you. You can't find this on the planet when I'm showing you. And it's not about what command can do. It's, it's start looking at this from the consumer experience because the consumer is going to come to you one day. And it will happen in this own company. Somebody in this company is going to embrace this and take advantage of the experience they can give from this technology, and they're going to fly. They're going to hit the uh, hockey stick growth. And somebody who says, I don't need this, it doesn't work, it's not going to work for me, is the one who's not going to be in business anymore. And their clients are going to say, you didn't offer this to me, and Jay's with Keller Williams and he did, I'm going to him. Because you don't have this yet. And that's why I want to share, and here's the reality, Look at command like your phone. This is not all the apps and stuff to run it. So the phone today is your remote control of your life, right? Everything you have in your life is in that one device. Every contact, every mail system you use, all your social media channels, right? It's all together. Well, that's the goal of command. Our goal is to eventually bring it all in. Because <coughs> I have all the systems I just showed you that Heather has, you tell me how many of these talk to each other. I don't even think one of them do. None of them. No wonder the client is upset with us. No wonder the client complains the fact that the consumer experience is so fragmented for them. Perfect example for you today. Okay, I sent you a text message from my phone. Okay, great, that's my phone. You know what, we're gonna go look at home, so let me send you an MLS alert from the MLS. Okay, that's a different system. By the way, I have a cool app. Put it on your phone today. Well, that's a different system, but okay, I'll put that app on my phone. Those three things didn't even talk to each other. Then I go, okay, when well, I'm ready to write the contract, let me send you an email from Dot. Well, that doesn't talk to the app, doesn't talk to the MLS, doesn't talk to anything. Okay, great. Now we've done that, I'm gonna send you to the next thing. Do you see how just those five examples, no wonder the consumer's frustrated, no wonder we as the agent aren't actually getting everything that we need to do our business. That's the goal of this. Not to say Heather can't use these services. What if I can start costing off some of these and save her money on this? Because it's $25 a month to use this platform. So I can tell you right now, once we get this to use everything conversion for you, that's a $12,000 a year saving. Right? And I'll share with Gary, and he's going to talk a little bit more about if I can save you money on this and stuff, it'd be like giving you a check every year. Not about giving you marketing dollars at a new startup company who thinks they know real estate. What if I could save you even more money year after year after year as cash in your pocket with that change your life. So I'm going to use this example here, and Dave, we're going to put you in the system, and I'm actually going to add you as a contact. I'm going to make sure we tag your neighborhood, and I'm going to put you on a smart plan so that you can pull it up on your phone today and see what it looks like. Okay. Sound good? All right, so I'm going to come in here, and if you haven't been in command, that's why I have my command classes, and this Tuesday's class, and Monday's class in Avatar, Tuesday, Fort Lauderdale, Wednesday, Coral Springs, is how to get started and add your contacts, do a transaction and do your contacts inside the system. So that's the in-depth how-to. However, one thing Alan and I want to make sure we do here is we want to show you something you haven't seen before. 
It started with you first, our select elite group of the top leaders in our office. And we know if you pour into your business, everything else will get easier and necessary. So this became our little thing to help you. All right, so I'm here in command and everything starts with the contact. So I'm just gonna come to a contact here and I'm going to add Dave to my system. And if you want to follow along or who has it, you're welcome to, and Dave will get a bunch of spam. So the goal of this is to get contact information, right? It's just a place to store it. So I'm gonna start with the simple idea of adding a contact. And I already know the first part, Dave Gervais. And Dave, what is your email address that you want me to send this to today? Dave at ResideOceanSide.com. Perfect, and what is your phone number? 254 3663. 3663. Perfect. Now, I'm going to do a simple tag because I know he's a candidate agent. Here's something to think about, guys. Start using this for profit share. Who are you talking to? Who's your co-op agent? I'm going to send him a great little uh, neighborhood information to his email today. What a great opportunity to say, hey, co-op agent, I've got a really neat tool that we're testing, and I value you in the real estate business. Would you give me a review and a personal preview of my technology and let me know what you think this email looks like? A, you can give your feedback to somebody, so if they don't like it, great. But B, they're going to see something that their company hasn't even started working on because they've got the fun newsletter that says, here's the best pie recipes. The consumer wants to know where the heck it is. So the most important thing about this, though, is the address. So I'm going to sit there and come under here and go to the uh, additional contact information. And Dave, what is your address? 1512 Scott Street. And that's in Hollywood? Okay. And there's a reason for doing this. So when Keller Williams is looking at it as a company, Josh just shared we have over 40 million contacts in the system. Do you know less than 24% of those contacts have uh, web, uh, actual home addresses, physical addresses associated to them? That's because, what did the MLS require? Just the name and the email. What did the contract system require? Just the name and the email. We got in that habit, and we as real estate professionals don't know where the heck our people live. Mm -hmm. Sound like an issue? Maybe we can say something yeah, on that? Yeah, I mean, that was just so profound, and I don't want you to blow past it. I mean, just imagine it, it, if you were with a co-op agent, and and you just ask that simple question. First thing, you tag them as a co-op agent, um, and you just ask them, hey, I have this new technology. Let me get your address, and I'm send it to you. Can I follow up with you in a week? Let me know what you think. And it's just gonna blow people away because nobody has this. And it's just so simple. You're not recruiting them. You're asking them for feedback, and then they're gonna get this every two weeks anyway, and they're always gonna think of it. Well, it always becomes a reminder, and that's the reality, right? One of the best scripts when it comes to property share isn't throwing KW in their face or saying, we have everything you need. It's asking questions about the business and saying, hey, what are you doing for this? And then sharing them and asking for their feedback. You can do that in so much stuff. So I'm teaching Grow Your Property Share now for KWU, and that was one of my ahas was, okay, I'm going to tie that with your hand. There's so many ways you can demo our tech, and I'm going to show that live right now. So I'm just going to do this. I'm adding Dave. I've got him here. I do the tag here, um, and I'm going to say create. So I'm creating a contact in my system with the name, email address, and phone number, and his physical address are gonna be the best ways to do that. So here's Dave right at the top of my list. Now here's the power of this system. It's not just gonna be Dave. It's gonna be everything related to him on the right-hand side, meaning any activity we ever do together. Meaning when I send him that email and he opens it, it's actually gonna track the fact that he opened it, what properties did he click on, what did he like. You guys, you just became the Amazon of this scenario. And by the way, I'm gonna show you in a minute that Zillow doesn't even have the neighborhood information on it. It has a tab of neighborhood data that's not even accurate. It has nothing about the neighborhood, so I as a consumer cannot find where do I wanna live because the real estate industry has said city, state, zip code, and map are the only thing that matters. And you as an organization said, no, 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 no. We live in neighborhoods. And we're gonna put our flag and bet on that. Here. So this is Dave's account. Here's his neighborhood automatically tagged. So he's considered South Broward as far as next door goes. So I know a lot of you will say that the map's not right. Let me just tell you what next door is, guys. It's a client chosen, your consumer chose the neighborhood boundary maps of next door. It's a neighborhood platform. They drew the map. Doesn't mean it's accurate. Doesn't mean they verify with the tax record. Doesn't mean the name of it's called. It means somebody said, hey, next door, I love where I live. I think this is the neighborhood name. Here's what I call it. And 10 or 20, 30 people voted for it and said yes. 
It's not about you being right or saying this is wrong. It's about, hey, consumer, you guys chose this boundary map. This is your map of what is this neighborhood, and I can't wait to show your map from next door and give you our MLS data of everything happening in the area and more. So I just wanted to highlight that fact. Now, I'm not gonna worry about where's Dave going. I'm just gonna start with something simple of, hey, he's got his neighborhood tagged. So I wanna send this to him. And we talk about the 34, so 36 touch. Two of the smart plans you have today that will get you there is the quarterly call plan to remind me to call him and a actual auto email of his bi-weekly neighborhood update to tell him what's happening. So I'm gonna come to the smart plans tab right here and I'm gonna add him to the smart plan and I already have these selected that I've already started my library. So I'm gonna choose the quarterly call plan, which if you click here says one phone call today, and then it reminds me 90 days forever. Forever. It's not gonna stop after six weeks. Or like eEdge, when that one campaign ran out, you forgot to turn on the next year, and you stopped talking to them for the 36 touch. That happened to all of you, I taught it, I know. So I'm gonna add it to that first. And this is new, now my ability to say, when do I want that to start? I can start at a different date now. So that just got released this week. I'm gonna start it now. And this just tells me to remind me to call him today with a task item of the day. So that's one plan. I'm also gonna come here and do the bi-weekly. The bi-weekly means I'm gonna send him an email right now, and then every two weeks until the end of time, I'm gonna keep sending him an email about the neighborhoods he cares about. This just became your Amazon one-to-one -one relationship email. Not a one-size-fits-all, it is 70 and sunny and all of America today about real estate. Here is what matters about you and your neighborhood and where you live that you are not getting from anyone. So I'm going to say select this, confirm for today, and confirm. So I just added the two smart plans. And in my timeline, it's telling me that I added to these smart plans. Dave, if you want to pull up your phone, you should have an email from me here in a second that should come in. And it's going to look like this. This is the email we just did. If you haven't been here in a while, we just re revamped this email. It's going to show you neighborhood trends. Now, I don't have Dave's email, so we'll have his version from me. But this is the one I set up for myself that I'm testing with this. Here are the neighborhood trends. Here are the stats. Here's new listings nearby that they can explore. Here's everything they can do on this. No rich in the neighborhoods that I care about. And I can hit explore here to go to my website and learn more. And Dave, if you got that email and you click on one of those, I should see in here that you clicked on the property, went to something, and clicked on it. So once it comes in, it's okay. Might just take the moment. But once that does come in, then that's what would be happening. It would tell me physically what happened. <coughs> Is there value in that? Yes. Is there a reason to touch base with them and say, hey, did you get the email I got? I just want to make sure you got it. Now, it isn't meant to replace the MLS yet. But we have that tool that we're starting that process because eventually I need to replace the MLS. The MLS is not efficient. The number one complaint is I saw it on Zillow first. The other part of it is you're sending these auto emails. Okay, well, we can't track anything from Matrix side. I have to do it from here. So that's just one great example of how you can start using that today and start your 36 touch. All I have to do differently right now is send a postcard and then send something else. So I just want to kind of share that with you because that's something you can do today and it really comes down to the consumer experience. So for time purposes, I'm going to play a short clip from Gary explaining that technology exercise and I just want you to hear his words around, if I can cut some of these costs, what the heck does that mean? So one of the ways, so one of the ways that you can behave like your competitors is ask, ask, you can be the agent and say, um, so let me ask you a question. How much do you spend for your tech annually? I'm going to $2,500 a month with my CRO. Sixty grand. And how much of this, that's a good question, but how much of this will this replace? Eighty percent of it. So this would save you $45,000, let's say, a year? That's what my admin is telling me. So this is like me giving you Forty-five thousand dollars to use for marketing. Okay. So if, if you agree to stay in business with us for ten years, this is like I just gave you four hundred fifty thousand dollars check to market yourself. And yeah. Okay, I'd like to give you four hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> so that's one example of it. And the other part that I want to share with you briefly is this is from Josh in his Inman interview, and it actually will have Gary Keller as well. Just the simplicity of why the client 
experience is what matters. Everything in the world has moved to that. Airbnb, Uber and Lyft, right? They are changing the industry by having one platform to go transact everything around my travel and everything I need from one central place. That's what we need to do for real estate. So this will be wrapping it up for us. And I'm just gonna hear a short two minutes from Eric and Josh D. Um, tied back to the same operating system that you do a transaction with the full journey and then the consumer can actually go through the entire transaction on the phone. And so the full end to end um, driving the corner for us, we're super excited about that. And we're preparing for a national event. Very kind of wishes you could be here. Um, we know these are some of the best minds in real estate uh, pouring in to figure out that raise the bar. And so um, he did record a quick video, a uh, 30 second video just to say, um, Thanks, sir. We can watch that now. Awesome. Let's watch it and wait around. I am Gary Keller. I know the chair of the Keller Insurance. I'm also a real estate agent and have been since 1979. It's this passion that pushes me to make things better for all agents and the clients that trust them with the biggest investments in their lives. This week, we're honored to give you a first look at our soon to released consumer app. With this release, agents will be able to offer an app with a world class search experience and enable their client to transact a real estate deal straight from the phone, all while keeping the agent at the center of everything. Awesome. That was a much more restrained. <laughs> the, the whole goal there was that's the whole focus of it. And while I don't have time to show it to you, do me a favor today, go home and actually pull up your website and do a side by side comparison between ours and Zillow. And the biggest difference you're going to see is the neighborhood data is so different. And I've got a referral right now from California. And the person is a young couple online going to 20 websites saying, okay, I looked this up. Can you help me find the best neighborhood? And you know what they asked me? Where the young trendy people are? Well, I can't really answer that for you necessarily. Where's the best place to go eat? Um, can I walk to the locations I want to? Where are the schools? Those things are on your neighborhood page today. I answered everything except for what is the crime rate for them from one website. So I've got videos on that. That's what we're here to teach you. Come to the class next week, but that's what we're pouring into you. There are simple things to do. It just starts with adding someone. So today, add yourself before you leave. Add some of these agents in the room. Practice with each other. Before you go out there and tell every consumer you know what this is, because you don't understand it yet. And Gary even said, anyone who's telling you this doesn't work for him, odds are they didn't put their hands on it. And you're hearing somebody tell you it doesn't work, it's not perfect. There's a lot of stuff that does work, and it is time to start getting in because the app is coming in the next two weeks. And in order for that app to come out, you have to start being in here. You have to have your website set up. You have to have your marketing profile. You have to have contacts with a physical address to take advantage of this. And you're going to see the industry change forever because this will become disruptive and innovative. Because if I can get somebody off of the Zillow app and they never go back to it, that's mm -hmm. endgame. So thank you, I'll answer your question after, but the whole focus is getting going. So before we go, we'll turn it back. Okay.